This is based on a true story. <laughs> and there are not enough sarcastic quotes in existence true to go around that. True story uh, about Ed and Lorraine Warren, yeah. Yeah. who were uh, demonologists and paranormal investigators. I, however, have a different title for them. And this is uh, my own opinion, allegedly. I know they're dead, but yeah. who knows if they have some kids lying around uh it is my opinion that they are what we call uh liars and con, and con men con and women artists. con people it's time to hack the movies with tony and newt and this other person oh my god newt yeah there's a ghost in the store it's right there oh it's ghost. It's the McDonald's tape. It is, yeah. It says it right there off the back. Yeah, that's that's a ghost in the store. Speaking of ghosts. Did you ever see our episode where we talked about the McDonald's tapes? Are you, are you talking to me? Yeah. Oh. The new guy? Uh, no. Yeah. Who are you again? Are you talking about Ghostbusters 2? No. No. The Adam's family. Oh, yeah. 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 We're off to a good start. Great start. I've listened yourself. to almost every episode, and <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. I was going to ask you who the hell this is, but I hate introductions. Oh. So why don't you do it? All right, who who the hell are you? Uh, I'm Sean O'Rourke from. Uh, I mean, you're wearing my shirt, so I'm surprised oh, you don't know who I am. Yeah. Oh, right, uh, right. Sean from Movie yeah, Dumpster, along mm -hmm. with my best friend Joel Escola, who's, who's been on the show several times. Yes. When you get him back on? He was supposed to be here this week, but <laughs> yeah, stuff happened, week. <laughs> so we changed the whole schedule around. Yes. Uh, yes. Sean is on the Movie Dumpster podcast, mm -hmm. and you know he's just riding his friend's coattails to get on my show. <laughs> just you know, god damn it! You gotta call a spade a spade, right? <laughs> um, That's uh, yes. Hi, Sean. Thank you for being on the show. For those of you who don't know. Well, yes, in the Movie Dumpster mm -hmm. podcast, but also Sean has edited a couple of our videos. Yeah, yeah, some of the best, really, I have to say. <laughs> okay. I, I had little involvement, really, in the actual so, execution, what, but... What was it, uh, Power Rangers? Power Rangers. Power Rangers, Sean, people really love that Power Rangers <laughs> episode. I think it was Mint Salad. She really uh, elevated it. Guys, can we, can we just give a round of applause for Sean for trying to make Mint Salad work? The Good job, good job, Sean. Everyone clap at Sean. Yes. Can, I, can I clap for myself? Is that too pretentious? Yes, you edited the first episode of this uh, modern series we're doing. Yes. Uh, yeah. Psycho Gorman. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, yep. he did a Velocipaster, which I think is our lowest performing movie. It anyway. Be, yeah, yeah. Dude! Was that a scary ghost texting you again? No, it's, it's my ghost finding technology. We're, we're, I'm going to make a bingo card for when people watch this. And one of them is going to be like, Newt's fucking phone keeps ringing. That'll be the uh, center one. So you just mm -hmm. get bingo no matter what. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's just, it's a free option. Anyway, we're talking about ghosts today. Yeah. Or demons or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're talking about the conjuring. Yes, because there's a now there's part three comes out soon. Yes. So we figured we would watch the first one again. On HBO Max, <laughs> right? Yes, it is. Right. Yep. Just yep. like Godzilla versus Kong. Oh, I noticed that shirt. Oh, yeah. you were Team Godzilla? Why? Who were you? Were you Team Were you Team Kong? Did Move. you make a mistake? Moving on. Uh <laughs> yes. Conjuring's coming out on HBO yeah. Max and uh this is a, an expanded. It's actually one of the few uh, shared universes that actually worked. Yeah, maybe worked financially. <laughs> yeah, to a varying degree. Yeah. Other than quality. the monster verse, yeah, people give credit for the monster verse actually working. Like, uh, other they're making than, another one. Other than King of the Monsters, under doing like a Son of like, Kong type thing. That's what I read. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I did not expect this to be a shared universe thing. No, I don't think anyone did. I think they just kind of lucked into and it. And then they all came together though in the Annabelle movie. Like, why yes. wouldn't they all come together in a Conjuring movie, but instead they all came together in Annabelle Horror Comes Home or whatever it was, because I was telling you yeah, about it. Yeah, the and third it's, Annabelle it's, movie. Uh, the whole movie is essentially just that one episode of Friday the 13th, the series, yeah. where they have a Halloween party and some people go down in the basement and accidentally fall into a clip show where they see what all the all the <laughs> cursed things do um but we were talking about that uh that that one has the the armor the samurai armor oh, comes yeah. alive and i was like that's kind of cool um yeah so i saw this movie when it was on video i did not care for it uh knew you i saw it with justin's dad in the theater in arizona and he walked out 
we saw it in the middle of the day whenever it was it's like July when it came out and he turns to the the poor kid who not quite all the way there and who's sweeping out the popper and he goes that was really scary and then he just walked away but he said it in a way where he was like righteously indignant towards his feelings on the film and yeah. the kid just looked at me with that like I, why, why so so you thought it was okay it was all right i definitely um i don't think i've, I've seen the other ones i haven't seen uh this one since it was in theaters it was, it, so we're all pretty underwhelmed sean yeah. what do you think about this movie this is one of my favorite horror movies. <laughs> what the, what the fuck, Sean? What is I mean, wrong? It's, it's not Hellraiser, but I like it a lot. You probably thought that rat was really big too in that movie. <laughs> oh, from of Unknown Origin. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah. So I was on the un, of of Unknown Origin episode of Movie Dumpster. The movie we've made fun of it on this show, but in case mm-hmm. it's your first time watching, and our friend Joe said it was a movie about RoboCop versus a giant rat, and then we watched it. And I think me and Sean agree it was just kind of a big mm-hmm. rat, not a giant. Right. Yeah, I mean, specifically, Joe had shown me that movie years prior yeah. and had told me that it was a giant rat from what I recall. And yeah. I was like, mm-hmm. I don't remember the giant rat. <laughs> we were, but it comes up now in, in regular life too. Kieran, myself and some other people who work here were going uh, somewhere in Philly and there was like, scabs like there was the whole oh when the um yeah so when like union workers uh protest yeah protest when they're on strike scab workers they put up the inflatable rat and, and they played the same the yeah. person who was driving the van goes that's a really big rat and then kieran and i at the same time was like i guess it's a pretty big rat it's not a giant <laughs> rat and we looked at each other and we're like oh no <laughs> um speaking of movie dumpster can i just expand on that slightly okay uh for people that don't know what that is yes. i mean you could go back oh and... now it's his show go oh, ahead yeah, Sean. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, Why not? Well, what kind of person <laughs> works their way onto some other person's channel and constantly plugs their own shit? Next, you're going to be like, oh, I'm Sean from Movie Dumpster. Yeah, well, you got to constantly remind people about your stupid thing. Go ahead. Do your plug. Do your plug. Well, I'm Sean from Movie Dumpster. <laughs> um, did I just beat that into the ground already? Mm-hmm. Yeah, keep um, doing it. Keep doing it. The, uh, of course, of unknown origin, Tony was on that episode. We also did our Pumpkinhead 2 episode with Tony that last year. That was a good year. one. That was a good one. Uh, but it's basically just a movie review show we kind of break everything down to the nitty gritty for better or worse oh, oh, oh so you're coming on my movie review show to plug your movie review show i really like the Maybe episode with justin no that's that the was worst the best one that's all the worst. worst yeah it was a good episode it's the worst episode justin's super insightful you know anyway <laughs> uh check it out please uh so yeah today we're talking about conjuring you love it we mm, don't care about yeah. it <laughs> so basically this is based on a True story. <laughs> and there are not enough sarcastic quotes in existence True to go around that. True uh, story about Ed and Lorraine Warren, yeah. Yeah. who were uh, demonologists and paranormal investigators. I, however, have a different title for them. And this is uh, my own opinion. Allegedly, I know they're dead, but yeah. who knows if they have some asshole kids lying around. Uh, it is my opinion that they are what we call... Uh, fucking liars and con and men con and women artists. con people yes yeah. uh yeah and just awful human beings first time i ever remember seeing them is there used to be a show it was in the 70s but it used to rerun all the time which was called in search of i and remember leonard, yeah, I used to watch leonard nimoy that. was the uh Wait, how did you say that leonard nimoy nimoy <laughs> nimoy you said nimoy, nimoy. nimoy. did yeah. i say leonard nimoy? nimoy yeah i don't know some people say you know it that my way. favorite uh star trek captain is the one played by william shatnar <laughs> My tongue didn't like go over all the way, and as it was coming out, it sounded right in my head. Um, and but you see the show that was all about like supernatural stuff, and they did an Amityville horror episode, and I remember mm. Ed and Lorraine Warren mm. Warren were. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's my anecdote. Uh, <laughs> you know, my favorite character on Star Trek was the Doctor. Uh, D. Forrest Kali. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> so yeah, this uh, this movie is based off them. Uh, it was directed by James Wan. Yeah, I I like Aquaman. Okay, okay. I wasn't a fan of James Wan. Mm-hmm. I think maybe I've heard his action movies are good, mm-hmm. and I did like Aquaman. And I hear, like, the Fast and Furious he did was fun. Mm-hmm. He did that, like, revenge movie with Brad Pitt. Was that him who did that? Uh, so, yeah, I hear his action movies are good. Yeah. So I'm going to watch his action movies and see if I like those more. Because I hate his horror movies. 
I really hate them. Like, the Saul's are whatever. First Saul had a great ending, but yeah. it really doesn't hold up to the light of day. Uh, like, Dead Silence is one of the few movies I... And I rarely do this. Mm -hmm. It's one of the few movies I turned off with the intention of never finishing. Yeah. Because it was so terrible. Yeah, it sucks. What's he, the name of the doll in that one? It was like Buddy or It was basically Billy ripping or, off the fucking doll from Goosebumps straight yeah, up. Yeah, or like Robert the Doll almost. Yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. You know what's funny? You know what other movie I have turned off with the intention of never finishing? What's I'm that? looking at it. Puppet Master 5. Oh. Someone gave me that tape and I remember turning it off. It's probably stopped where I stopped. <laughs> anyway. See, I knew he wasn't going to say Swamp Zombies 2 because he still never watched the movie that his good friend and co-host Well, made, how could you so. top the first one? Anyway. <laughs> uh, very, very easily. <laughs> no, no, that Making a sequel to Swamp Zombies 2 was like remaking Night of the Living Dead. It's uh, stupid that's and shouldn't true. be tried. What kind of fucking hack would do that? <laughs> anyway, uh, Insidious came out. Mm -hmm. Which is just a Poltergeist ripoff, if it you ask me. It was Poltergeist 2 yeah. mixed with Wes Craven's New Nightmare, but if the demon... Mixed with, like, Twin Peaks with the other world. And if the and if Freddy Krueger in that version looked like Darth Maul. I, Insidious is, like, whatever, schlocky, generic ghost yeah. thing. And then Darth Maul showed up, <laughs> and I remember laughing so hard. I do like... Because I've seen most of the movies in that series. I do like that Lin Shay. Yeah. Has had a whole other career because I've always really liked Lynn Shea, Robert Shea of New Line's sister. Yeah. She was in the original Night of the Living Dead. She was in There's Something About Mary, yeah. something like that. I like that, like, this 70 something year old woman is like the lead of this horror series. Yeah. She, yeah. Uh, we met her at a convention one time. It was just like real quick, but she was super cool. So I was like, I, that's fine. I like that, you know? Mm. Uh, yeah. And like I said, this is based off con artists. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Alleged. Mm -hmm. Alleged. Yeah. Con artists. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I guess let's get into this. I wish movie. I had a business card that said that Newt Wallen alleged con artist. <laughs> it's alleged. <laughs> it's not confirmed. So this movie is based off the real Perrin family mm -hmm. incident, which yeah. I guess they were spooked by some ghosts uh, or they just like wanted attention and yeah. made shit up. That's usually how these stories go. This is a real haunted video store. And someone should come and investigate it and make a movie about it. Well, I, there was a ghost in here recently. Yeah. Uh, I actually called Melissa McCarthy to get rid of the ghost. She, she like made a bunch of fart jokes and did like an Urkel impression mm. and the ghost actually killed himself again. Yeah. Oh. And see when ghosts kill themselves, they actually come back to life. And then he walked outside and he had a truck hit him <laughs> so he can haunt the street and not have to be in the thing. She with kept the ghost. complaining about wontons. We weren't even yeah. having Chinese yeah. food. I don't know. What was I, going kept on there. Yeah. I kept asking she her to leave. Yeah. I kept asking her to leave. She just kept falling over. She kept <laughs> falling over and her husband was like this will make a great movie and I'm like oh god Netflix will give us money for anything <laughs> we go to the Adam Sandler school of that yeah. you know yeah. uh, so the movie starts mm -hmm. with Annabelle who's gotten her own expanded universe <laughs> yeah. uh, spin-off series uh, yeah these nurses are like yeah this our spooky doll there was a ghost that wanted our spooky doll and we did a seance and we're like alright ghost this medium said you can live in our doll and then we just let it happen. Why did they have this doll? There are a bunch of like 20 yeah. or 30 well, year olds. The, so the doll is dirty yeah. and it's all broken and yeah. cracked. Why did they have it out and about anyway? So, we, so across the street is where the new offices are going to be. Right. And uh, so we we had a Sharkula meeting one night and Crystal was here and Ryan was showing and showing Justin and I the new offices and stuff like that. And behind the building is this like broken down shed and mm -hmm. Crystal goes in there and Ryan and I are like, well, if a, something attacks her, we're, we're gone. Like, yeah. we'll just say, who's Crystal? I don't know. And she came out with these two dolls. Yeah. That they're look, still there. They're still there. They look like they're clearly filled with the souls of dead children <laughs> from England in the 1700s. They remind like, us. They remind no. me of the uh, haunted dolls we saw at Vampa Museum. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Mixed with like the creepy ones from uh, yeah. Stuart Gordon's dolls. You ever see dolls before? <laughs> yeah, that movie dolls. Fucking yeah. dolls are great. Okay, so these nurses, they, they put a spirit into their doll. Yeah. Because they're idiots. Uh, they find out that the doll is up to no good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's starting to make trouble in their neighborhood. Got in one little fight. And those nurses got scared, scared and said, you're going to live with the Warrens in Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't really work out. It started off strong and then we fucked it up. I don't know. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, it was all right. Anyway, so the doll like wrecks the whole apartment. Yeah. Yeah. 
So it ha clearly has physical strength, despite the fact it has no muscular mm -hmm. system. Who well, knows? they say in the Annabelle movie that it's just like a big black monster, like ghoul demon that's like lifting her up and doing stuff. Oh. You know, yeah, but well, it's also, show that. It's Newt, I did not see those movies. Okay, so I saw anyway. it in the theater. So, anyway, they decide this doll that can just like pick up things and launch it yeah. across the room. They're gonna throw it in a dumpster, not bound or gagged, uh, with a flimsy metal door that can be easily moved. Yeah, at least Telly Savalas in that Twilight Zone episode, he wrapped it up, yeah. he tied it, put it in a trash can, put blocks on top of it. Homer Simpson threw the Krusty doll down the endless yes. pit yeah. where they sent the naked pictures of Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then they throw them back out. So, and then they're shocked when the doll comes back. The very next day. These nurses are idiots. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if I ever had them as a nurse, I'd ask to have my plug pulled, yeah. even if I wasn't dying because I don't trust them. And they were sitting with the poor, not Anton Yelchin looking guy, <laughs> yeah. who was like, look, I want to fuck these broads, and they're into goofy stuff, so I just gotta be like, I totally agree. Was he the one I that rolled the crayon out? Yeah. Was him? yeah. He's like, look, you gotta do a lot of things that you don't want to do when you're trying to get stank on your, <laughs> stank on your hang low. <laughs> I've told it before, I pretended to be real into astrology for a chick, but then she was too into it. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it went too far. I'm like, yep. I'm like, oh, I'm a Virgo. And then she asked me about like symbols and stuff. I'm like, all right, I'm out. I can't yeah. do it. I can't do it. Then they're talking about Annabelle at some like university. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of con art, colleges are scams, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just a big... Colleges are basically scams. Yeah. It's yeah. it's scamception at that okay. point. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Huh. Once your college is saying, yeah, we're doing demon ghost stuff. And it's like, okay, what are we paying for? Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, they okay. used to do... um. I used to have uh, a theater in Pittman, New Jersey, which was supposed to be haunted. And yes, there were some creepy things that happened, but they used to do ghost things there all the time. And the type of people who would come out to it were like a parody of the people who are really into the supernatural. It's like there are people who are very interested. I'm interested in it. I don't believe in all of it, mm. but I'm always interested in it because it's neat, you know? Sure. But then you would see people who were like... Uh, did you ever see the movie Lord of Illusion? Yeah, that's years a great ago. movie. Years ago, Do you remember I when don't they remember go? Remember movie. when um, when fucking uh, Scott Bakula mm -hmm. goes to? Uh, I was gonna call him the Quantum Leap guy because I couldn't remember his <laughs> name on Quantum Leap. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, but he goes to like the Magic Castle. Mm -hmm. uh, not the magic asshole from the, the Arrested magic Development. Yeah. yeah, and there's all like the magicians that are there, yeah. and it's the dude. <laughs> the round table. Yeah, the guy who's the lead is the dude from Batman Returns who yep. had the monkey. And he was also. <laughs> I love that He actor. was in the X Files and he had like the Fiji the, the, mermaid. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was a good one. So he's there, and like all these people looked like those people. Mm -hmm. And uh, and like another lady who was just there was very interested in the supernatural. Was like, oh, they give the rest of us a bad name. And I was like, I like that there's like. <laughs> Prejudiced within the world of people yeah. who believe in ghosts and fairies and <laughs> the fucking Loch Ness monster. Uh, yeah, so the they're teaching the thing mm -hmm. like, yeah, there's a little ghost doll, and the, everyone's like, yeah, sure. And then there's like that weird scrolling text, like Texas, Texas Chainsaw, Chainsaw Massacre. Massacre. Now the real Annabelle, everyone knows this. Sorry, it's stupid. Is, the, yeah. is it's a Raggedy Ann doll? Yeah. So they probably couldn't get the rights, or did they want something that looked like all of his other doll movies? Probably, probably yeah. both. Because yeah. it definitely be had a dead silence look to it. Yeah. Remember at the end of that movie, the lady was turned the dude's dad into a ventriloquist dummy? I take it I wasn't the easiest person to get along with in the past. But I've changed. Jamie! Is that what happened? Yeah. That movie is fucking stupid. Yeah. I didn't finish the movie. Mark Wahlberg's brother was Donnie Wahlberg. Well, he was in Saul yeah. too, I think. Oh, right? was he? Yeah. Well, he was probably in both. That's probably how he it's got it. It's also like that thing like where it's like they made two sequels. Well, they made a spinoff and then two sequels. So it's like, hey, what if we just make our own version? Then we don't have to pay anybody yeah. the yeah. for it. So we cut to Ron Livingston and Lily Taylor mm -hmm. moving into their new house, yep. which I'm sure has spooky ghosts in it. Because that's what always happens. I wish I lived in a haunted house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that would be awesome. I'm good. And then who who wrote that the dog is the best actor in the movie? Oh, yeah. You were you were saying that. You're like, how do you <laughs> think they got the dog to like do that? Like the dog was like shaking and like, right. li I was like, wow, the dog is the best actor in the movie. Yeah, because it won't go in the house. I think it has like an electric fence there. Like assuming how they did it. I don't know. But it's James like. James Wan's like, the only way I can make a movie is by abusing animals. <laughs> oh my God, right. Someone's there with a fucking whip. Wait do you see what I did all those fish in Aquaman. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then Cindy, I guess that's her name, is hanging out by a tree. Oh, a the little one? Yeah, she's yeah. hanging by a, a spooky tree. And she finds a spooky music box. Yeah. I'm sure it has something to do with the spooky. Go this movie's so spooky. It is. That's going to be the name of the episode. The Conjuring is, <laughs> is spooky. spooky. <laughs> uh, but then 
we meet my co-star. Oh, that's right. Yes, young Joey <laughs> King. A year after her brilliant performance as young Talia al Ghul in The Dark Knight Rises, she's one of the sisters in the movie. Because this bit um, never gets old. I was like, you know what? She has a big career. She's doing like Netflix movies and Hulu originals, and I'm doing this show. We both got very, very famous mm -hmm. after The Dark Knight Rises. I have to say, your scene, a lot more memorable, because I do not remember young Talia Ghoul at all in that movie. Well, I mean, it's when you put Tony in something. It's true, yeah. Like, like people are always like, was Newt in that episode? I was so fixed on what Tony was saying. Yeah, it's like that scene in the movie when the radio or the tape cassette doesn't yeah. play his audio. That That's probably what you're thinking about, right? <laughs> that's exactly what it was. Uh, yeah, so they're playing Ed Newt. You said you remember this, and you're a million years old, so yeah. maybe you do know this. They're playing hide-and-go-seek, but it's also kind of Marco Polo, where yeah. it's like you have to be blindfolded, and then people clap to let you know where they are. My grandparents lived out in a place called Indian Mills, New Jersey. It's like out by the Pine Barrens mm -hmm. and they're much, much older. And when we were kids, they, they taught us this game where you had to get blindfolded and clap and to find everybody in the house. So I remember playing this game when I was like really little. We also, you know, we used to uh, run with a stick with a wheel, you know, it was mm -hmm. that kind of old, you know, <laughs> kick, the can, kick the can, another Twilight Zone. That's reference. how I got younger. Uh, that was the episode. That was the part that Steven Spielberg directed because he was so depressed oh, the movie, about yeah. the death of <laughs> Vic Morrow that he's like, I'm just going to make the fucking one with the old people, whatever, you know, can you blame <laughs> him? So, yeah, we used to play the, the clappy blindfoldy game. I've never seen that. Oh, before. and my, my cousin Bernadette got way too close to the street when we were playing <laughs> that game. And then my grandparents like, go, go play fucking Nintendo. I don't know. <laughs> they didn't want a pet cemetery situation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me and my cousins, we would do like cool stuff like jump over the fire pit. Yeah, you know how you play that game? Yeah. Jump over a fire pit. You build a fire pit. Mm -hmm. And then you just like jump over it and see if you get caught on fire. Yeah. Like right. normal stuff, not weird shit like this movie. <laughs> My eye was twitching at the thought of doing that. Wow. I like to live. <laughs> I enjoy life, Tony. You wouldn't have... The fire wasn't that big. We wouldn't have died. We would have just got burned a little. I guess he, I would see, have to he has see that. the fire. He actually jumped over a fire pit and got and didn't get burned. I was at my job. I have a third degree burn on my leg that required a skin graft, and that's why I don't wear shorts because I have a patch like this big. <laughs> because uh, there used to the, at the the old theater I had, there's the old projection booth that was like walled off. Talk about fucking spooky horror shit. Yeah. The, there there was a janitor's closet. And the janitor was drunk when I came to work and there was a little kid's birthday party. And I said, fuck you, I'll clean the fucking place myself. And I took the vacuum and I threw it at the wall and the wall moved and we found a staircase behind it. And Tony was up there, but yeah. all the pipes are not insulated anymore. And I was lifting stuff up and they turned the heat on and the pipe turned red and my leg got burned so badly that when I went to the hospital, they had to like pull pieces of my jeans out of it. Ugh, yeah. Oh my so God. yeah. Speaking of which, <laughs> in this scene, the girls playing hide and go clap, mm -hmm. uh, they bump into a wall, which leads to yep. a secret basement mm -hmm. that the 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 whatever family, parent family, didn't know they had. Yeah. And then this is when we realized <laughs> that the dad, Ron Livingston, his matches are also lightsabers. Yeah, you wrote it. So you wrote it in your notes, yes. and I was making my own notes when we were watching the movie. And I go, "Why does his matches sound like a lightsaber?" And you're like, "Oh, you're reading my notes." I was like, "No." So Tony and I think very similarly. Yeah, I rewound it like three times mm -hmm. last night. I'm like, "Hold on, what was that effect?" Because it's literally like, <laughs> I'm like, "Why did the matches need that intense of an effect?" <laughs> Yeah, so they find this whole, like, basement and stuff, yeah. and they're excited about this house, but yeah. the dog is not excited. No. The dog won't even come inside. Mm -hmm. The dog's like, I disagree with this. Uh, so they have it just chained up outside, so yeah. just wander away. So I feel like I've seen this movie a million times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this feels like Amityville and yeah. Poltergeist and... Insidious. The and Insidious. The <laughs> it seems like everything I've yeah. seen. Yeah. Uh, and then my girlfriend made a good point. The dad is like, oh, I'm going to see if I can get that furnace working in the basement. And it's like, wait, you didn't know you had a basement. What were you guys doing for heat? Yeah. Before you found out you had a furnace. I've seen this movie probably 10 times and I've literally never thought about that. And then you said that earlier and I was like, oh, shit, that's a great point. That mm -hmm. is stupid. <sighs> and uh, Lily Taylor. She's getting bruises that she can't explain where they came from. Mm. And the movie wants you to think this is a spooky ghost, but literally 
every woman I've dated, every woman I'm related to, my mom's sister, they always complain that they have bruises and they don't know where they came yeah, from. Yeah, like they bruise like fruit. Like, I, yeah. <laughs> how did I get this bruise? And it's like you walked into something. Yeah, you bump something, and you didn't realize how hard you bumped it's it. It's one of the very few de uh, defects of their sex. Yeah. It is really. <laughs> why, why do you ever wake up with strange bruises? Yes, actually, I don't, it's probably healed now. I don't know what was going on, but I had. I, somebody at work said, like, is Tony beating you? <laughs> <laughs> Upstairs, they were like, what happened? Did you and Tony have a disagreement? And I was like, oh, I have a bruise. Hmm. Maybe I, I have a haunted apartment. I rarely wake up with bruise. I do wake up with, like, cuts and stuff. I don't know what that's all about. It's Just because I, what I do is I fill a... a potato sack with Valencia oranges and beat Tony <laughs> oh so my it god it shows up it, it drives the point home and it doesn't leave a mark so <laughs> like uh what's it called like um phone books yeah the trailer park boys they always beat each other with phone books oh so it doesn't leave a mark. so a dude uh <laughs> A dude um, who used to go to the skate park that was in the mall where yeah. Justin and I used to work uh he was arrested and we were like well what happened they're like yo he he like injured this guy really badly and they're like what happened like <laughs> He put <laughs> Oh god. He put a car battery in a pillowcase and swung it at a dude as he went by him on rollerblades and I'm like What? <laughs> what? Like how did he did <laughs> I think he really <laughs> overcomplicated just a simple act of violence. Like, was the other person alive? I don't know what happened to the guy, but there used to be this dude who used to hang out in front of the mall all the time, and we just knew him. Um, and yeah, we found out what happened to him. And then years later, we had like a little get together of like people who used to work there, and they're like, "Remember the time that dude fucking clocked that other dude with like a pillowcase with a car battery in it?" And then it just like, where did he get the? He was at the mall. Where did he get the pillowcase? And what? Where'd the car battery cut? Like, <laughs> yeah. How did those things get there? <laughs> I will say about the bruising, though, obviously, like you yeah. kind of joked about there that it's like every other movie in this mm, genre. Mm. It's like, okay, there's your early signs that there's some kind of demonic activity. Now, was this part of like the true story that the mom had bruises? Because it reminded me of like someone I used to work with at a retail store that would always have injuries and they were falling down the stairs a mm. lot. And then they let out that they were having marital problems. I'm like, oh. So now I'm wondering, I'm wondering if like in real life, these yeah. bruises were just like, yeah, it's the ghost. It was ghosts, it right? It was ghosts that <laughs> <laughs> So explain to me this, Sean, because you sure. love this movie. It's your favorite movie. Of all time. Well, I didn't say that. You said I, it's said I liked it a lot. You said it's your favorite movie. You said Amityville Horror sucks. Mm -hmm. Said, I, I don't think you I said, said that. The Exorcist sucked. Yeah, you, I don't think I said that either. You I, said I, the, I was like, "Where did my copy of Poltergeist go?" And you said, "I threw it in the trash because yeah. it's garbage." Tony, it sounds like you're putting a lot of words in my mouth. You just named a lot of movies that I really like. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. You're just trying to look good on my show. Yep. <laughs> I guess I can't argue. So explain to me. I understand that the spooky ghost scare killed the dog. Mm -hmm. Sure, but. How did they kill? Did it have a heart attack? Did it was its neck broken? I wasn't sure how the dog actually died. I think it's like uh, I, I, I actually have no idea. I was gonna make a reference to Double Dragon if you ever seen it, where uh, the T one thousand Robert, what's his name? Uh, Robert Pattinson. Robert 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 Rodriguez. Pattinson. Uh, no. Yeah, I almost Robert said that. Robert Patrick. Robert Patrick. Patrick. His brother is the dude from Filter. Oh, okay. really? Hey, man, nice shot. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, in that movie, he has like those fucking shadow powers and he kills Michael Berryman with his shadow. So maybe yeah. this Bathsheba, Bathsheba. Is that the name? Of, yeah, that's right. Uh, has shadow powers and choke the dog to death. I don't fucking know. You know what? Shadow powers. That's what I'm going to go yeah. with. Shadow power is going to be my break dance. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to uh, Ed's. Uh, demon collection yeah. in his house, mm. a spooky collection of like artifacts. And he's with the guy who I thought was the teacher from Gremlins. The guy. <laughs> but it wouldn't make sense. No, it wouldn't. The age is yeah, right. well, you know. But he does kind of remind me of the yeah. teacher from Gremlins. So he's like, here's all my spooky stuff. My, uh, my monkey from Merlin's shop of Mystical, Mystical Wonders. Wonders. Yeah. Uh, the, the enchanted tiki room parrot. Yes, like. my samurai armor. <laughs> <laughs> That's my samurai The armor. time that Jesus went to Japan and fought <laughs> Samurais. It's it's in the Bible. I don't. Yeah, that's funny because this movie's got a very Christian angle, and yeah. I wonder if like Lorraine Wa Warren made that like you do the story, make sure and put a lot of Jesus in it, because uh, it's like wow. So do the Christian demons 
what did they do in feudal Japan? I'm not sure. <laughs> How were they able to fight those demons without Jesus in their heart, according to this film? And then he's like, and where's this one from? And then Ed Warren walked out and goes, it's from Japan. How do you know? Because that's where I bought it. He's like Bruce Wayne. Right there. <laughs> and then Tony's king of the wicker people. <laughs> we don't talk about inferior Batman movies on oh, this I'm channel. Sorry, I'm we sorry. We only talk about the Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh... So he's like, why don't you just throw all this in an incinerator? And mm -hmm. what's the reason he gives him? He gives him like some bullshit excuse like, well, if it's in my house, it uh, stays under lock and key and they can't get out of the objects. And the guy's just like, hmm, oh, OK. But here's what I think, my opinion, allegedly. I think the real reason is, well, then I wouldn't have stupid shit to trick dumb people into thinking <laughs> <Yeah>. demons are <laughs> mm -hmm. around. Like, I can't just be like, I can't show them a picture of a samurai armor and be like, yeah, there's a demon in it. It's like, oh, sure, whatever. Here, here's the thing with that. In real life, I'm with you. But in the context of this film where this shit is actually happening, I kind of want to know but, what all these other cases but were. Sean, this is real life. It's based on a true story. Yeah, legally, Hollywood's not allowed to say that unless it's true. Yeah, just yes. like yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> Which was based on a true story. Both versions are 100% true, even right. though there's some similar differences. I'll take your I'm word still, for it. You know, You're a lot more yeah, famous only, than me. You've been in a Hollywood movie. You know more about I this than I do. I was in that Hollywood mm -hmm. movie, and I worked on a... TV show that existed. I uh, watch a lot of TV and movies. Me too. So. <laughs> not as cool. Uh, no. I'll admit it. It's not. <laughs> Sean, can we at least agree that uh, Dark Knight Rises is better than Transformers 2, The Revenge of the Oh, Hulk? yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll go with you on that Transformers one. Transformers yeah. 2 is yeah. one of the worst movies ever. Because because the extras they hired just weren't weren't good. Not just extras. The, the production uh, coordinator on one of the days was also really bad. I, I, when, yeah. I, when I watched that movie in the theater, I was like, this production coordinator's awesome awful yeah. anyway you know who was great in that movie though who? skids and mudflap <laughs> great characters i don't know why they didn't we're use gonna leave that in <laughs> <laughs> we find out that there was once an exorcism mm -hmm. that apparently ed warren was there for even though i'm pretty sure catholics one don't do a lot of exorc yeah. exorcisms or two don't just let bystanders hang around their exorcism. Right. Anyway, so something happened to his wife. Here's a question. Yeah. You know, like they'll do anything for like make a wish kids. Yeah. What if one was like, I really want to take part in an exorcism and they're like, well, fuck, he's got like chemotherapy coming up. Like take him to the exorcism. <laughs> like imagine that. Like, <laughs> here's my question. Would John Cena be the one administering the exorcism? <laughs> It's like, I really want to be part of an exorcism of Maurice, uh, and I really want John Cena to be there. And then they have to tell John Cena this, and he's like, what? No. And then they show him the picture of some poor, fucking sunken-eyed, Charlie Brown-looking little motherfucker. Oh and he's like, oh my god. He's like, well, he could be like, no, he's here, you just can't see him. <laughs> I'm just thinking about John Cena with a Bible and a fucking, like, priest outfit on, like, you can't see me! <laughs> like, God, he's all around you. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Sean, yes. the, the movie hints to what happens. They mention it a little bit later. Do the sequels go into this exorcism? Kind of. So there's two part answer to this. So Maurice, he's introduced in The Nun, which is fine. It's not a crazy great movie. old Maurice from Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, he's like one. Of, I forget exactly. I saw it once in the theater. He's like one of the main characters. And you find at the end because he uses a nickname throughout that. Oh, my name's Maurice. Yeah. Wink, wink. OK. Um, and then he, I heard he has other names. I heard he also goes by Space Cowboy and the Gangster mm -hmm. of Love. Yeah, Rip sure. Wow. I'm glad you got that. Mm -hmm. Keep going. I, I didn't. Keep going. Uh, then you you actually find out in uh, the second Conjuring that it's actually this demon Valak that was okay. possessing him, and that's the nun uh, demon that's in all the posters. Right. That scene is really cool in the second one with the hands come around yes. the picture and move towards right. her. That actually was a really cool scene. Legitimate, cre legitimately creepy. I yeah. will ask you at the end to tell me more about the series because I didn't see any of them. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so something happened to his wife. It's explored, as you said, yeah. in the sequel. So the spooky ghosts are messing with, like, the one little girl who mm -hmm. sleepwalks, and mm -hmm. they just have her 
<laughs> head butting her head. <laughs> Baby Jessica Chastain, because yeah. it's the girl from Interstellar. Mm-hmm. She's just constantly walking in the thing. It wasn't as good as the creepy head banging in the Hereditary, though. No, no. That well, that's, awesome. that's, that's a whole different <laughs> level of head banging. Uh, yeah, and then there's the or whole the head like, banger's ball, because apparently I got the guy's name wrong in the Dawn of the Dead episode. Yeah. And everybody got really mad at me. I'm like, why don't you fucking Google search? And I was like, dude, we just do these things on the fly. This is just, we're just. You are very uninformed. Well, I am. I'm an uninformed dwarf. <laughs> Yes, because very tiny. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I do a podcast about movies, and yes. you know, you take a lot of notes, but you know what? When you're just kind of talking about the movie, sometimes you don't always look at the notes. You just what say it, what you remember, and you yeah. might get it wrong. It's cinematic receptacle, isn't that the name of the I show? Have no way. Film trash can. Film trash can. Film trash can yeah. was the name of yep. his. Newt, we all know the name of his podcast is Film Trash Can. <laughs> Crystal can't even get your thing right. She's like, "You're so famous. Everyone loves hack the films," and it's like, <laughs> stop. Okay. Stop, okay? She's Being th- cute will only take you so far in life. Trust me, that's how I got next to the cow door. Yeah. <laughs> She's fired. Anyway. Let's uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but they were like, uh, you can't wake sleepwalkers, which I think might be a myth. Yeah. yeah I, don't I know. think there has to be other layers, like uh, if they're like on a ledge or something. <laughs> like, you don't want to wake them up around certain things, mm-hmm. but I think you're supposed to like kind of direct them back to bed. I have to deal with this stuff because my girlfriend sleep talks. She will wake up and have full on conversations with me, but the Mm -hmm. conversations start in her dream and then they finish spoken out loud. And I wake up and I have to be like, what, what are you talking about? She's like, this is the center bar. You're at the other bar. And I'm like, we're in bed. What are you talking? Like, like it becomes an argument Mm -hmm. because she doesn't want to admit that she's sleeping and she gets super defensive. And then she finally wakes up and she goes, Oh, oh, I was just dreaming. I'm like, yeah, that's what I've been telling you for 10 minutes. I hear the secrets that you keep when you're talking in your sleep. Oh, mm, right, yeah. right, right, right. <laughs> that's a song from when I was a little kid because I'm old. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, the youngest girl has an invisible friend like Jody in Amityville Horror. And it's almost exactly like that shot where she's singing Yes, Jesus Loves You song when uh, Lois Lane walks in and then she yeah. stops, you know? That's like so much of this is like Amityville Horror yeah. and it wasn't that long after the remake of Amityville Horror where it's like we... Well, I think it's that thing where it's like they have the Warren characters yeah. in it and they are associated with Amityville but they can't do Amityville. Because the series was supposed to be the Warren Files originally which right. was what they were going to call yeah. this series of movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so they went on Conjuring which I guess maybe Makes sense. I do like that the font and stuff like that looks like 70s. Yes. Like it looks like yeah. the Sentinel. Oh, we will say, we, yeah. we, we mentioned like uh, the 70s look they nail. They nail, yeah. Yep. They, they, it really looks like a uh, film. I actually look looks a little nicer. Yeah. But it feels like a film from that era until you get to the wacky CGI. And yeah, until you get to the, the CGI and the schlocky ending. It, yeah. it follows a nice even keel, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the kid and the mom, they, uh, well, one, there's a jump scare. She's Mm -hmm. like, Mom, look at my spooky music box. And then she scares her. And I'm like, all right, Mm -hmm. this is what this movie is the most egregious. But James Wan's fucking jump scares. I hate the insidious, the constant jump scare and loud music. I'm like, stop. That's like it's every movie anymore. People. Ah! Yeah, it's just like it's people will they, they they they're at the movie theater, but they want to look down at their phone, and then they wait for it to get quiet, and then they look up because then they know. Yeah, you know, Sinister was really bad with it. You know what the worst offender was? Is Sinister, the one that's apparently the scariest movie ever made because it has the most jump scares yeah. and it's most startling. The scare, the dumbest one was uh, Silent Hill. Retribution. God, I didn't see oh, that the one. one with reconciliation. The one with the dude from Game of Thrones. Oh, Sean Bean? No. Oh, yes. no, no. No, well, Sean Bean was in, in the first one. No, yeah. he's in both. Did oh, he, is he? Yeah, oh, he's okay. Like the husband and of he the doesn't main die, which is oh. awkward. No, you're talking about uh, the guy Kit, who plays Jon Snow. Kit Harrington. Who everyone oh, yeah. said I uh, for years, people were like, oh, you're like the fat Jon Snow. Oh, you're like ugly Jon Snow. And I'm like, you could have just said nothing. I People used to tell me that when The Incredible Hulk came out, they're like, yeah, right. really short hair. They're like, you look like ugly Eric Bana. And I was like, wow, thanks. Yeah, you yeah. mentioned that on the Daughter of the Dead episode. <laughs> Did uh, I? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't remember what I you say in things. You repeat yourself, asshole. Oh. <laughs> I think I have early onset Alzheimer's disease. <laughs> you said that too. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> um, the worst offender was Silent Hill Retaliation. Mm-hmm. I don't remember the name of it. Sure. Uh, there's like a spooky thing and <laughs> it cuts to Pop-Tarts popping and they, and, like it wasn't even a scary scene, just cut to Pop-Tarts going bing, 
And then and John was, Travolta gets blown away. Yeah, yeah. About. And that was the jump scare. And I'm like, did they just try to scare us with pop tarts? That's the dumbest fucking thing I've ever Have seen. Have you ever burnt the roof of your mouth on a piping right. hot pop tart though? That does suck. Yeah. But the popping doesn't really scare me. I was gonna say all that glycerin. You can't eat that stuff. No. Yeah. So they go to play the stupid hiding clap game. Yeah. And this is unrealistic because the mom would just cheat. I want to get a shirt that says, I got the clap from watching The Conjuring. <laughs> <laughs> Sell it on the Hack the Movie yeah. store. <laughs> let's let's consult legal. I kind of like that. <laughs> just clapping. <Yeah. laughs> uh, so the mom realistically would just be peeking the yeah. whole time, especially when it's a stupid kid that doesn't know. Yeah. Kids are bad at hide and go seek. Uh, yeah, so she's like looking around. She's like, clap. And then she goes to the dresser. Mm -hmm. And this part was actually kind of creepy. Good, yeah. I will give credit where credit is due. Uh, she's like, clap, and you see the hands come out of the dresser and mm. clap, but then she goes to it and there's no one in the dresser. Yeah. That one's pretty but good. But all the dresser scenes remind me of the uh, the Tiny Tim scene in Insidious. I keep getting, which one's? Yeah, the Insidious Insidious is Tim. that one, Tiny, and then the other Tiny one Tim. is the Bagul movie. The, the Sinister, Sinister is Bagul. Is Bagul. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so that one was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, at night we get Joey King in bed, and the ghost is like trying to pull her yeah. out of bed, which was done like two years earlier in Paranormal Activity. Yeah. Done better. That, that chick just gets dragged right off the bed. <laughs> Remember yeah. when that series turned into Chronicle for no reason whatsoever? Yeah, that was weird. Yeah. I didn't watch the 3D one. There was oh, the, uh, <laughs> so the 3D one. There was a dude who worked for me, and he's like, Newt, I saw uh, the new Paranormal Activity movie. I was like, oh, that's great. And I didn't really care. And he's like, it's called The Ghost Dimension. I was like, yeah, yeah no, we, we have the poster. He's like, yeah, it's it's got a new technology called The Ghost Dimension. And I go, no, it's 3D. He goes, no, it's called The Ghost Dimension. And I didn't even respond to him. I just kept walking. <laughs> As you should have. Yeah. <laughs> he also wore light up shoes and a light up pacifier. And one time he came back. Yeah, he was like in his 40s and he came. Oh, he had a lot of fun in the yeah, 90s and doesn't want to leave the 90s. His mom would drive him and then he would be like, can I use the theater phone to call my mom? And I'm like, why? He's like, oh, I just got to give her a call. And he would yell at her because she didn't put Lunchables in the bag. And he was he was Will Ferrell's character in Wedding Crashers. I was Crashers. just going to say that. But oh, he wedding, wedding, yeah, yeah, he showed up in the middle. Pancakes or whatever he said. What's he say? Meatloaf. Meatloaf. Oh, and he shows up in the middle of the night one night and I just knock on the glass and I come out of my office and I just see blue flashing and he's like, hey man, um, you looking for anybody? And I was like, no, I, I, I fired you. And he's like, yeah, yeah, but I'll come back and work here if you want me to. And I'm like, no, it's all right. And then he just vanished into the night and all I see was <laughs> blinking blue and I'm like, there he goes. <laughs> uh, now that's terrifying. Yeah. So Joey King wakes up. Yeah, she does. Uh, and this is also relatable because my girlfriend has, she she gets uh, visits once or twice a year from the sleep paralysis demon. Mm -hmm. So this scene didn't scare me. Was it scary for you guys? Scary is maybe not the right word. It's creepy, but yeah. I wasn't scared at all. I have had, I did have sleep paralysis once and it was terrifying. I was just frustrated. Yeah. Because it reminds me of every time I get woken up <laughs> and she's like, there's someone there. There's someone there, and I'm like, there's there's literally no one there. Just yeah. breathe, breathe. And I'm like always half asleep. She's mm -hmm. like freaking out. I'm like, it's fine. There's no one there. She's like, do you see it? I'm like, I literally cannot see them. There's nothing. I'm probably not the best person to be no. dealing with this. I hope one day Tony is murdered, though. And then we just go, well, <laughs> well what? you should have taken it a little bit more seriously. <laughs> but then you don't have a show anymore. Oh, Justin and I have it covered. Trust me. <laughs> well, that's true. Another episode like, I edited, the dude, Pokemon wait, wait, episode. Is this episode coming out after that one? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm like Batman. I have a contingency plan if any of you get out of control. Like, <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. It's fair. Yeah. So this scene just frustrated because there's been a couple times where I'm like, there's no one in the corner. And actually, so like I said, she has dreams and she yeah. talks in her sleep and uh, she worked in uh, the restaurant business mm -hmm. and like I guess when you're a server or whatever you have to say corners when you're coming around the corner yeah, so yeah, no yeah. bumps into you. Okay, I don't know that. So when I'm woken up at 3 in the morning in the pitch black room and my girlfriend's going, corner, corner, corner. I, I start going, who's in the corner? What's in the corner? And I get scared. I was like there for like 10 minutes and then she went back to sleep and I'm like, <laughs> like I finally turned the light on. I'm like, there's absolutely no. And then the next day she's like, oh, I was having a dream about work. We say that. I'm like, 
What the fuck is wrong She's, with you? You find out it's coroner, and she just turns oh. over and just suffocates Tony with a pillow. And this is when we like just moved in, and mm -hmm. we had just watched uh, Haunting of Hill House. Mm -hmm. So I was a little on edge. So hearing corner, corner, there's someone in the corner. I was like, yeah. <laughs> You're like a leaf fluttering and then the you wind. Went, oh, no one puts baby in a corner. Yeah. <sighs> See, that was low hanging fruit that I didn't say. I, I, I realize, let it stay there. I realize I'm complaining. I, I love my girlfriend sometimes. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, the we get another jump scare. The door slams. Yeah. It's like okay. And then Lily Taylor's, I, I was like, wow, Lily Taylor's stunt double took a tumble down. Oh, oh. yeah, so Lily Taylor, <laughs> she's, uh, the ghost is tricking them with the clapping. Yeah. Uh, and there actually is the one scene that's creepy that was used in the trailer, trailer where she's yep. got the match and it comes. Uh, but like, uh, what was it? It was before that, I think. She goes to run out because she hears the screaming. Mm -hmm. I'm going getting it out of order. Yeah. She goes and the door slams in her face and I burst it out. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I like, was not ready. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to look that comical. I'm like, oh my God. It's like horrible what's happening. But like, it was filmed so it, funny. It felt like because we just watched Batman Forever not too long ago and the terrible <laughs> Alfred stunt double when he gets oh, brought yeah. down to. Oh. It's, clearly, it's clearly an actor in like his 30s with like sprayed on white hair. He's like, he's like 30, 40 pounds lighter. <laughs> The door thing is like a lesser thing. Mm -hmm. Then there's uh, Ed and Lorraine going to someone's house being like, you don't have ghosts, you got loud pipes. Yeah. To show that like, oh, we don't prey on the mentally ill. <laughs> mm -hmm. We show people when they're not actually haunted. And I was like, well, allegedly, I'm hearing a lot of things about you, Ed and Lorraine. Whenever I hear pipes and ghosts, do you ever see Ghost Watch? No. The BBC thing? No. Our British followers probably know it. You never saw Ghost Watch? No. Uh, the BBC did this whole investigation live on TV in the 90s. And, oh. uh, and it was like an investigation of this house where these people, it's the little girls talk about Mr. Pipes. And they were doing it like they had like respected journalists on the thing. And they just kept having the a dude appear in weird place in the house. And then they did it as a, it was a, it was a joke. Yeah. And people were calling the the number. Like <laughs> he's in the room with the kids and stuff like that. And at the end, the whole fucking studio goes crazy. Yeah. And the BBC had to like was investigated for it. That's funny. It's really cool. You can mm. find it on YouTube. It's one of my favorite like fuck yous to the public yeah. type of thing. I just think about like when they go into that house and tell them, "It's just your pipes." Do they still like charge them? Like that'll be two thousand dollars, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then this scene is when Lily Taylor's going around like the next day, yeah. looking for ghosts because I think the the pictures get blown mm -hmm. off the wall yeah. and stuff and then the girl's banging her head on the dresser right. again she puts her to bed but then the dresser's still banging and then there's like a, a scary lady yeah bath sheba is like the ghost witch what is that name for is that a demon name or is that was the witch that lady? Must be her actual name okay. that's what's in the beyond at bed bath and beyond is the bath sheba <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah this is a jump scare but mm. i guess there was actually something scary so i don't mind it yeah. that much but again it's just like the scene in insidious where the little boy or a little person i don't know what it, it was a little boy uh, yeah. jumps out of the thing like i saw that i was like "Ooh, that's creepy and then it's set to the creepy Tiny Tim song. Yes. Mm. I feel like James Wan was just like, okay, I mean, I personally like Insidious, but a lot of people don't because it's very hokey. Mm -hmm. uh, I yeah. feel like he was like, oh, I have a much bigger budget. Let me redo a lot of those ideas yeah. with more money. Yeah. And then uh, Ed and Lorraine are doing another one of their uh, scam sessions. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about that guy who was possessed. Maurice. Maurice. Yeah. Who was bleeding. He was tearing blood and the cross was upside down and I was stuff. Kind of with them with the crying blood. I was like, oh, yeah. a little silly, but sure. But the sick did they show the cross? I'm like, ah. Which is right, out of, the, right out of the exorcist when they call the priest over in the middle With of the, the night me. and the help mm, yeah. is under her skin. So he talks about how like, yeah, it was speaking languages he didn't know. And I don't think that shit has ever been proven. I think that's been disproven many, many times. They're like, yeah, just spontaneously started speaking a language they didn't know. It's like, no, that person is lying or you're making it up. That would be scary. You can't just... Yeah, you like like it's never been like recreated. Like you can't just start. Oh no, it was recreated in a historical document called uh, Evan Almighty. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I forgot. Very very historically you know, accurate. Evan Almighty. Theologically accurate film. Listen, let me tell you about Evan Almighty. <laughs> 
it saved my life, New. Oh, did it? Oh. Yes, I grew up in the Catholic Church, and I, um, in my teens, I became disenfranchised, mm-hmm. and I lost my faith. And then I saw Evan Almighty, yeah, and I said, Jesus is real, and I went back to church. Anyway. Huh. The only thing, the thing about it I remember about that movie, there's like some little dumb shit, but Jim Carrey uses his uh, God powers to make the Buffalo Sabres win the Stanley Cup. No, not Jim Carrey. Uh, That's Michael the first Scott. one. The, the first one was Jim Carrey. But that's Bruce Almighty. Right. That's what I mean. Which one was Evan Almighty? Evan Almighty was the sequel with Steve Carell. And then there wasn't there one about the Ark as well? That's the second that's one. That's the second, second one, one. Evan okay. Almighty. But in the first one, the Jim Carrey one, yeah. he uses his God, his Morgan Freeman powers to make the Buffalo Sabres win the Stanley Cup, but they didn't have the rights to the Stanley Cup. So they, in the scene where it's like, it, it looks like the trophy they would have given me when I was in like middle school. And I was like, <laughs> oh man. So, okay, Bruce Almighty, I, I've seen it once. <laughs> yeah, no, fair. It, I think it, I have it on DVD. Isn't the uh, Jennifer Aniston in that one? Yes. 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 Okay. So yeah, that's all bullshit. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Um, and Lorraine Warren, the real one, is in the audience. She is. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. See her for a second. That's true. She's you, there to get that check. You brought it back. Uh, you grounded he's ex- us. <laughs> he's explaining the, uh, he explains the levels of yeah. demonic possession, mm-hmm. and they differ from our friend Edmondo, who told us the layers of possession at his p- museum, Museum Vampa. We have a video on it. You, you can, can check it out here. <laughs> Why did you know? Right, right in card- front of my face. <laughs> New, the cards are up here. Oh. They're not there. Are they there now? No, it's probably <laughs> gone away after I you said ever, it. You, ever, you know how like they do that in pro football games where they have like the digital lines? Yeah. yeah. So we were watching a game uh, and somebody's girlfriend went, oh, wow, how did like those lines are there? And how do they know to move them and stuff like that? And I'm like, they're not that's it's digital. Like, they're not really. <laughs> I was a little distracted because I heard a ding. Yeah. Again, it's kind of lost me. It's, it's EVPs. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not your PKE meter. That's yeah. not no, too no, advanced, no. obviously. So yeah, Lily Taylor's like, help us, Warrens. You're our only hope. <laughs> <laughs> she sent it in a droid. But yeah. then like, they're even like, ah, I don't know. We're kind of busy. We don't really have time for that. They're just, they're just like, oh, look at this girl's wearing. She doesn't have any money. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, then they go. That's probably what happened. Mm-hmm. So they go to the house and they're like, oh my God, there's so many spooky ghosts. And these ghosts, they hate jesus and we love jesus uh they're like yeah the ghosts are doing this they're doing that and then the mom's all like here's a picture we have even though we shot at a beach for some reason this picture looks horribly photoshopped yeah uh but i remember that time at the beach and it was really great and since all the kids are the same age as in the picture this beach trip must have been two or three weeks ago (laughs) so the best moment of her life was two or three Uh, weeks ago i think they even say they took it on the way to the house Mm -hmm. I I i guess so it's like people they walk out of a movie and they go that's the best movie i've ever seen i'm like mm, you might want to think about it a little my bit my cousin said that about avatar when it came out and i was like i guess i'm never taking movie opinions from you again <laughs> you're disagreeing with what was once the highest grossing film of all time what do you know Sean? that left no cultural significance exactly. whatsoever there's a theme park at disney is there yeah oh it's avatar world but, but like after big movies come out somebody they always keep ripping off the things that are in it like the matrix and all that sure what what stuck around because even like the, the the Avatar was a big hit and everybody said, we're going to do 3D now, but instead they're going to do, we're going to just do conversion. So it's going to look like a murky piece of shit. Where yeah. James Cameron was like, I'm an insane person mm. and I'm going to shoot in 3D <laughs> and I'm going to make the dude from Hustle and Flow into a big cat man. And was... whatever happened to the guy from... Uh, the Clash of the Titans remake. Well, I know. Oh, yeah. what, like, what happened to him? The, the general guy, he was in Don't Breathe. He, uh, and yeah, no, that the general dude, guy, he was in a lot of shit. That dude rocks, though. He was yeah. in uh, Manhunter. He plays the yeah. Phil Seymour Hoffman mm-hmm. guy. Uh, was, was Conjuring in 3D? Was no. this one of those that got a 3D? Might have been. It was I, in the pocket there, for I sure. I saw it in 2D. So. Now, Same. Yeah. Uh, real so, quick, yeah. is there a reason why that's flashing? Ghosts. Well, Sean, thanks for showing us that the camera was messed up. <laughs> uh, we didn't lose too much footage, mm-hmm. but uh, you know what? Sometimes in haunted locations like the video store, ghosts can interact with uh, electrical devices and screw them up. And I definitely didn't grab a 64 gig card that was right next to the 256 gig card and put it in the camera on accident. 
I blame Jason Goldberg. Jason Goldberg put that car there. That's a callback to Fear and Loathing. Did Jason Goldberg that die that night in the hotel and he's been following you around ever since? He's like the ghost at the haunted mansion? Like, <laughs> Yes. I think you're on to something there. <laughs> Again, watch Fear and Loathing mm-hmm. to figure out who Jason Goldberg yeah. is. Yeah, so they were visiting the house. They see the picture. Uh, Lorraine basically says, you got a demon. Yeah. And it doesn't like you, and it looks like the predator, kind of. They do. They look like the predator, but they also kind of look like the uh, the ghosts who killed the pervert guy from Ferris Bueller in uh, End of oh, Days. Oh, God. Jeffrey Jones? <laughs> yeah, Jeffrey Jones. There we go. Not End of Days. Devil's Advocate. Devil's Advocate. However, Newt, on this channel, we have a review for both Devil's Advocate and End of Days. And look, you know what? They're kind of long episodes. You don't have time to watch them. You go to hackmovies.com, listen to the podcast feed. Boom. Cha-ching. And then if you have time, check out Movie Dumpster. But If yeah. you have time. If you have time. I was going to say, if you want to hear more about Jeffrey Jones, go listen to that Howard the Duck episode, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah. We have Howard the Duck back here. Anyway, so... Uh, have you been getting that creepy Facebook ad for the Howard the Duck doll? Yeah. It just keeps showing Why up. Why do I keep getting that? I keep getting hmm. it, too. Kieran keeps getting it. Justin yeah. keeps getting it. Are we going to just buy that doll? We might have to. I bought that Jaws head, and I don't know if it's even real. <laughs> is, is that doll going to be like our Annabelle? Like, it comes in here <laughs> oh and crawls all over the wall. Yeah, so this is when we realize, like, the, there's a little Christian propaganda mm-hmm. here. And he's like, well, Catholic propaganda yeah, here. Right. And he's like, yeah, it's going to be tough. Are your kids baptized? You're probably getting baptized. And we were like, what if this family was like any other religion? Would Ed and Lorraine Warren know how to shift to some other thing yeah. to like get them to get believe the their stuff? But then I thought with the birds who hit the it's wall. It's a demon. Sorry, we're Jewish. It's a golem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, like the the, uh, the birds that died by hitting the wall and the dog were th- because they weren't baptized, they died. Like, is that, <laughs> right. is that the only reason, you know? Yeah. That was a pretty good effect with the... Uh... It's my EVP again. Okay. Yeah. That's, That's a lot of ghosts in here. There's a lot of ghosts. That was a pretty good effect with the uh, bird. How do you mm-hmm. think they did that? I said it was either CGI or a, a puppet. You know what? Let's call our good friend and your co-host, Joe Lascola. My best friend, Joe he's a He's a big special effects guy. And what show are you on? I, don't, I, I mentioned it a few times already, Newt, but if you want me to, you know, promote myself again, it's called Movie Dumpster. Okay, I'll uh, write that down. That sounds Sean, interesting. what is Joe's phone number? I thought I had it. I Say it out loud on the episode. don't have my phone on me. <laughs> Hold on. I have it. Hey, man. What's up? Hey, uh, this is Tony from Hack Movies, very famous YouTuber. I'm using uh, Newt's phone. We had a question. Okay. We were watching The Conjuring, Sean's favorite movie. He loves it. He says it's better than Poltergeist and Toby Hooper was a hack. Um, we were curious because you're a special effects guy. Uh, there's a scene where like there's a dead bird like twitching. How do, how do you think they did that effect? Oh, geez. I haven't uh, I haven't seen The Conjuring in a while, but I would assume they would have done it practically, you know? <laughs> okay, well, that's... What? Well, you would know. I had a theory that the effects guy put some bread out on the lawn and then and then picked up a pigeon. And then when they said action, just fucking launched it at the house like a baseball. Is that something that happens in the uh, special effects industry? Would that be an effective way to make a uh, twitching bird? Absolutely. Especially after you put um, Asian uh, makeup on. Right. Because special effects people. Yep. (laughs) You know, that's a callback to the Master of Disguise episode. Yes, correct. All a right. great episode, by the way. Yes. Anyway, we have to go back to filming our Conjuring episode, which uh, it turns out it's a commercial for Movie Dumpster because Sean is some asshole who won't stop mentioning his own show on someone else's channel. And I can think of nothing more despicable than that. Bye, Joe. We love you. Bye. Bye. MovieDumpsterPodcast.com <laughs> I don't know how to turn your... Oh, oh wait, I gotta wait. make sure you listen to Movie Dumpster Podcast. <laughs> yeah, jo- Joe, we made it very clear in this episode. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, when Joe said practically, for some reason, I thought he meant what you just said, where they were throwing birds at the wall. I know what it means, <laughs> yeah. but my brain went right there. Some animals were hurt in the in the making of this film. What are you gonna do <laughs> about it? You put that in the end credits. Yeah. Uh, it's like an yeah. Italian horror movie, you know? Ooh. We also forgot to mention Lorraine saw a dead ghost in a tree. Yeah. Why doesn't she ever yeah. try to like communicate with the well, ghost? Why would, a dead ghost? That's like, it's <laughs> like jumbo shrimp. Sorry, sorry. You know, spooky ghost. Spooky like, ghost. Why? She sees the ghost, but she never goes like, "Hey, ghost, what you doing here?" Mm-hmm. Because they, you know, James Wan, he's stealing a lot of ideas from his old movies, but he doesn't want to be so on the nose, like with Insidious, when Lynch yeah. had like that gas mask that let her communicate. I would, so. yeah. I would go up and start tickling the feet of the ghost. <laughs> 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 
So yeah, I guess she's like a medium, right? Yeah. And I'm more of a large. There's your joke. I, I, wrote, I wrote that down. Sean goes, well, my girlfriend's really into mediums. And I said, that's too bad. I'm a bit of a large. And I wrote it down because I was so proud of myself. It's always good when you explain the joke. Yeah, that's right. Really and, I, and then I laugh at my own jokes and I realize I'm doing it more. And I'm like, and I, I want no one else to laugh. And no, I look like an insane no, person. It's very unprofessional. I know. To laugh on a show. Yeah. So. Uh, I read the comments and I'm yes. just like. Ed um, basically says your house needs an exorcism. Yeah. Which I don't know if the Catholic. One, he doesn't have permission to do that. Yeah. He, which they, in fairness, they show him trying to get permission. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I don't think you're allowed to. I don't think you exercise a house. You can bless a house, but I don't think you exercise a house. You can. Yeah. I mean, well, based, again, based on movies. Wouldn't that be well, a one, Wouldn't that be a gym? Well, one, you don't exercise anything because exorcisms don't really happen. Not sure, I'm talking <laughs> about movies, man. I'm talking about movies here. That's true. That's yeah, true. Because that's there's true. so many horror movies in this subgenre that it's like you're you're not uh, possessed. The house is possessed. Yeah, and then uh, Ed and Lorraine they do some investigative research, and it turns out it was a witch lady yeah. who killed herself and pledged her soul to Satan and by pledged. killing her uh, her newborn baby. Yes, so she pledged her soul to Satan, and then like so she just hangs out in the afterlife. Uh, throwing pictures off a wall? Well, we had the conversation before uh, from Drive Angry yeah. where he's like, we pledged our life to Satan. He's like, and the the devil's like guard is like, oh, it's funny, he never mentioned you before. Yeah. Because it's like, you got to think about it. Like, okay, say, I, say that stuff is real. I'm not saying it's not because I get yelled at in the comments when I say what I believe. <laughs> um, but then it's like... I do think it's real, because Evan Almighty showed me... Exactly, not the, Bruce the, the Almighty. Truth. But it's like, okay, so the devil... All you these, sinners. All these, people, uh, all these people pledge their soul to the devil. That's a lot of people. And the devil only has so much time in his day, <laughs> and he's like, I can't get to everybody, mm. so give them busy work. It's like we do people here yeah. in the office. We're like, go in there and like, you know, put cords away and HDMI stuff and all that. And it's like, and I'll be dealing with these guys now, but I will get to you eventually. <laughs> it's like the deli counter. Take a but, number. Yeah. Yeah. So the uh, didn't she want to go to hell to be with Satan? Why is she just like hanging out in a house waiting well, for her family to move in every thirty years and throwing in, pictures? I off lived the wall? in Connecticut for a while, and yeah, I think I'd rather be in hell. <laughs> 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 oh yeah. So they're setting up to get evidence. Mm -hmm. Because uh, they need evidence to prove an exorcism. Yeah. And there's like this groovy song that's playing. <laughs> yes. And you thought it was a I song. I thought it was like a song from like the 60s because it sounds kind of like from the 60s. Yeah. Same. And then you, your girlfriend told you. It's Ryan Gosling's band. It's a, uh, oh, what, what is their name? Dead Man's Bones. Dead Man's Bones. Yeah. And it's like a band that him and some other guy do. Yeah. And it's, it's him singing on the song. Mm -hmm. And then we looked it up. Uh, this has the biggest, like, uh, this made the most money of any Ryan Gosling uh, production. Yeah. And it's only just his voice. He's not in the movie. Yeah. And, and I, this movie made more money than all the movies he's actually in. Everybody I talked to, because we've had this conversation, like, yeah, it's an old song from the movie. So I just assumed it was an old song, you know? So did all of them, yeah. apparently. Man, what did, what did he have to do to get a modern song? It's weird that he's a singer, considering he's known for being in movies where he, like, barely talks. Yeah. You yeah. know? Uh, he was young Hercule Hercules. He was young Hercules. Yes. And uh, Joaquin Phoenix was in, was uh, got young Superman powers in the Superboy yes. series. See? It just reveals to us what the naked eye can't see. Pretty far out, isn't it? Yeah, it's groovy. So this part's weird. They the one of the uh investigator guys that come to the house, he's kind of like flirting with the oldest daughter. Yeah, but they don't ever do anything with that. It's just kind of there. There's by the way, there's too many kids in this. Like but, they don't yeah. Have, yeah. give them anything except for this scene and then it feels awkward. She's clearly a teenager. Her father's a truck driver and he's there and the dude uh he looks like the Asian version of uh who is the dude who was Robin in Dark Knight Rises? Is it Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Joseph Gordon -Levitt. My co-star. From yes, from Third Rock from the Sun. Yes. Um he looks like that guy but later on in the movie he's dressed exactly like I was dressed as Moochie the Disco Pimp <laughs> and this movie came after we shot that and I was like he ripped me off. Mm. <laughs> I think it's that thing though cuz they're trying, you know, whether you think it's real or not. It's like, well, there was really five kids, so we got to have five kids in the movie. Yeah. Uh, and then he also says, far out, isn't he? And she's like, groovy. And it's like, no, we got it. It's the 70s. Yeah. We, mm -hmm. we got it. The music. We got the it. Clothes. But the way they were talking. Well, not that Ryan Gosling song, but everything else. Yeah. We got it. But they sounded like uh, the scene with the dude from Jurassic Park 3 in Fear and Loathing, where he's like, and then it's 
groovy, man. <laughs> you know, it's like In that. Square. They're there to investigate ghosts, but then they're doing laundry. And they're like, uh, which by the way, that laundry scene is pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah, that when, was a like, good scene. Uh, the blanket like falls off and it hits a ghost and it goes in the window and the ghost there. That was good. But yeah, my, but that. then they also had them fixing the car later. So my thought process was Ron Livingston is also a con man and he's <laughs> conning the con men. And he's like, oh yeah, no, we have ghosts here. But then he gets them to fix the, the carburetor and he gets them to do the laundry and stuff hey, like that. you know, that. What? I think the ghosts... Uh, keep messing with that furnace. Can you just take a yeah, look? You take a look at it. Yeah, the <laughs> shingles on the roof. Uh, you know, I, I, the I, ghosts were up there. I think, I think the ghosts are getting through the shingles. Yeah, these the, floors they're <laughs> old and dirty. We can't get it up. Can you give it a shot, please? You know what? This antenna Can you just is really the part where he just said we can't get it up. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, this antenna. I think the ghost is using it for demonic signals, and we can't see regular TV. Can you get us like, yeah. a better antenna? Yeah. That's ghost. We want to watch the Hartford Whalers game in 1970. <laughs> Hockey team. <laughs> but yeah, that scene where the uh, the sheet hits the window, it's supposed to be Bathsheba. What, 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 Bathsheba? I don't know. I'm probably saying it wrong. Yeah. Uh, but that's where like Lorraine Warren's like, oh, fuck. And she runs inside. Mm -hmm. And this is where the mom like gets fully possessed. Mm -hmm. And then yes. it has this scene where it kind of like floats over in the bed and pukes like, into her fucking mouth. Yeah, yeah, that was which gross. reminds me of this. We were saying the scene from Drag Me to Hell, which mm, I really yeah. liked. Yeah. And then uh, later that night, there's, uh, I think it's like, was it the cop walking around? Someone's walking around and then you see a ghost girl split her wrist. Right. The random cop who's there for yeah. some reason. Yeah. And she's all like, look what you made me do. And then I said that is exactly the scene from uh, The Sixth Sense. Mm -hmm. Because when Cole walks into the bathroom and there's a lady she's like your dinner's not done look what you made me do and right. she yeah. slit her wrists yeah yeah and then it's also a taylor swift song it is a taylor and she swift starts song. singing it it's pretty impressive you know we are never getting back together <laughs> was that a taylor swift reference and the only reason yes. i know it is because we were hired by uh, a philadelphia sports station to write a song about when the Eagles were going to fire their coach, Andy Reid. <laughs> so we made a music video and Justin was dressed as Andy Reid and oh. I was in a morph like suit with an Eagle mask on that had no eye holes and Crystal was there and we had to film real quick because we didn't have permits and the Eagles fans are like Mad Max people and yeah. they like were throwing bottles at me and I couldn't <laughs> see and I fell over and some dude's like trying to hump me and stuff like that. It was insane. So. Oh dude, me and, me, and, me and Justin were in a guy's short film. Oh, that's right. Where we had to be like an Eagles and Dallas fan fighting and I had to like be wearing he was in green makeup and I had to be in blue mm -hmm. makeup with like the star yeah and then I had to walk around shirtless at like an Eagles game with all the tailgaters and they were not happy yeah, how are you alive yeah it was pretty rough I <laughs> wish I still had because I did it on Vine and yeah. I didn't back it up mm. but there's a video there was a video I did where I'm like yeah go Dallas then I turn over and it's all these Eagle fans <laughs> just screaming and throwing things at me uh, so that was fun anyway why didn't they take all the doors off the hinges. <laughs> yeah, that would make more sense. Before right? they did the spooky luring the ghost out. Because as expected, the girl goes into the door to slam her head against the fucking thing. And then the ghost shuts the door so they can't get in. Yeah. It's like, why did you just take the door off the hinges? You just said exactly why they didn't take them off the hinges. Because this is a horror movie and they need to have ghosts or demons fucking slamming doors to get, you know, some kind of effect from people Imagine watching it. Imagine pledging your soul to Satan mm -hmm. and then you kill yourself. Yeah, sure. And then it's like, what are my otherworldly powers? And it's like, you, you can like lock a door. Yeah, you're going to hang out like on top of this fucking armoire yeah. like, and oh. wait for Lily, Lily Taylor to move in. You're yeah. like, who's Lily Taylor? This is the, she was from The Haunting. She's, she's had experience with ghosts. Yeah. You might want to watch out. And you're like, yeah, but, but this is like the 1800s. What's what's a movie? It's like, mm. oh, fuck, I got to explain everything yeah. to these fucking And people. it's like, maybe sometimes you can work with the weather. Mm -hmm. You can make the weather. You can kill birds. <laughs> and birds, yeah. And she's like, but I like birds. Like, oh, lady, you should have read the fine print. Yeah. Like, It's like, oh, so I can like, can I like do magic on people and it's like oh, you can make them float yeah do your thing I gotta Fly? go no float I gotta go impregnate a religious lady so she can have Keanu Reeves I'll check you later <laughs> <laughs> yeah so they find a hidden room behind mm -hmm. the wall the dresser yeah which is the second hidden room we found in this movie uh and that's it did not lead to Narnia. It did not lead to Narnia. Uh, <laughs> but they find yeah. they find like a noose and then she puts the music box back and plays it 
And then Vera Farminga, Elizabeth Warren, thrall, falls through like seven floors, even though I think it's like a three story house. You said yeah. it would be funny that they put the music box down and it turned the wall <laughs> and it's the fucking Adams Family yeah. vault, you know? <laughs> fucking fester. <laughs> it's showtime! Mm -hmm. <laughs> that um, weird, like, burr, burr, come on and play with me. She falls down and, like, she's pretty badly hurt, but yeah. if she had Wonder Woman's heels, <laughs> she from would not Justice have been League injured. She would have landed, they would have been cushioned. You know, the magic key that don't shatter when you drop like 40 feet onto solid rock. I think she might have had them on because if you're falling that far, she got up like within a minute and she was okay. Even, and she's not even really scratched up. No. You would have like been scratched up pretty bad. Well, because she's Vera Farminga. Yeah. yeah. Is that uh, how you say that? I Who knows? Um, then we get a pretty good uh, scare with like the feet hanging. Yeah, that's that kind of cool. That one's pretty good. Mm -hmm. We it. also do find out in this scene that uh, because they're, she keeps seeing the fucking ghosts throughout the movie. Right. And she sees like one of the old owners yeah. had butchered her kid, mm -hmm. which is what they keep seeing in that music box in the mirror. Mm -hmm. And that's where like the little girl keeps following it, but we don't see it. It's just a late, uh, Lorraine sees it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then that's where... Elaine's like, oh shit, she's trying to possess the mother to kill the daughter. Yeah. That was a weird line delivery when Vera Farminga said, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> the ghost also tries to pull her necklace. Yeah. To, I guess, right. get information mm -hmm. on her daughter. Yeah. I guess. Uh, and then she goes upstairs. She's like, there's uh, the, the mom has a ghost in her, maybe. The ghost wants to go in the mom, and it's spooky, and then the little girl's hair gets pulled up. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't look as good as it follows. No, it follows sure. at a way better... Yeah. Uh, see, I do like when, like, her hair starts to rise up, like, it's static, and then she gets pulled. I thought that yeah. was kind of yeah. cool. Uh, yeah. You it's, fucking cracked up, I, though, I, I, when yeah. she went when, when she, that when window. She, when she threw that kid across the room into the glass. Yeah. I, don't know, I don't know why that was so funny. <laughs> I also don't understand how cutting the end of the hair fucking detaches her from the, from the ghost. the ghost was holding on to the hair. I and guess. they couldn't stab the ghost. Yeah, that's hair. true. I mean, come on. And then Vera Farminga goes outside and she sees her, like, daughter's ghost in the water, but yeah. her d daughter isn't dead. And it, it's not quite the same, but it reminds me of Amityville 3 when the mom is, like, trying to talk to uh, Lori Loughlin. Yeah. Speaking of scam artists. <laughs> uh, scammed all those colleges, man. Uh, Aunt yeah. Becky was like... Well, no, no, no. She's, I think she scammed the charity that she was raising. And that's using, even worse. And using the money to pay to get her kids... Yeah, it's weird. So, yeah. But again, scam, it's scamception. College is a scam. Lori Loughlin was a scam. <laughs> uh, Ed and Lorraine Warren Ed were a scam. scam. Allegedly. Allegedly. This is like a Russian... Well, Lori Loughlin, I think it was proven, but yeah. allegedly... Yeah. It's like a Russian nesting doll of scams. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, but in that movie, the mom's talking to her, not realizing it's the ghost, but yeah. really she's dead. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like the opposite of that. Uh, which was her friend in that movie? She had a friend who's... Uh, Meg Ryan. Meg Ryan, Meg that's Ryan right. Meg Ryan was yep. the friend in that movie. And Robert Joy is the dude from Land of the Dead who gets pulled into the well by the, the weird fly right. monster. Yeah. yeah, that was weird. I saw that in 3D at a uh, yeah. Philly show one time. Huh. Yeah. I don't remember that part at all. Really? So they uh, they think they have the evidence. Mm -hmm. And then the priests are like, they're not baptized. Yeah. And I mean, why is the Catholic Church going to put their neck out for people who aren't coughing up money? I mean, let's, let's look, I grew up in the Catholic Church. And uh, so my parents spent a lot of money mm -hmm. to send me and my sister to Catholic school, mm -hmm. which isn't really that much better of an education. Yeah. Um, my sister doesn't know how to read a map and I can't do math. So anyway, uh, I went to, as, as we all know, I have a goddaughter. Mm -hmm. I was originally not the godfather, but the guy who did it didn't want to do it. Yeah. So I went to my old church that I hadn't been in a really long time because the Monsignor there said I started the uh, Iraq war. I mentioned that in a previous episode. Mm -hmm. And when, when your Monsignor tells you like, hey, you're not going to church. That's why we're in Iraq. You're like, you know what? I don't think it's for me. Yeah. Yeah. But I go back and I thought based off, you know, Mom, all, you the, had all the oil and yeah. your parents like, what? <laughs> based off all the money my parents plugged into that mm -hmm. place, I'd be like, hey, I need to get approved to be a godfather. I, I don't have time to do the classes. Can you help me out? And they're like, you haven't been here in years and we haven't gotten any donations. We're not approving you. And I'm like, yeah. The fuck is this? So that sucked. Uh, eventually, the priest who did it just approved me and 
because who cares? But he was like, whatever. Yeah, sure. He were. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything about religion this time, so I don't get yelled at. Again. I will, though. <laughs> what? Because it's Careful like, what you say. Yeah. Again, again I, if this was real life, yeah. sure. Maybe it's bullshit. Maybe it's not. I wasn't there. I don't fucking know. <laughs> but in the context of the movie where they have fucking proof on camera, this shit is really happening. Yeah. I cannot believe this priest is like, well, they're not fucking baptized. Yeah, again, well, the priest obviously says it exactly like that. Yes. <laughs> and he's like, I don't know, I gotta check with the Pope. I'm and not then, sure if we can do this. Yeah, Vera Farmaga pops in and goes, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's fucking stupid because it's like, yeah. come on. Yeah. So uh, the, the Warren's daughter, who I forgot they had. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I totally uh, forgot they had a kid. Um, yeah, she's walking around the house at night mm -hmm. and then the spooky ghost room is open and she goes in it like an idiot. Uh, but who's missing from the ghost thing? Annabelle. <gasps> Ooh. I was hoping it was the samurai. That would have been awesome. <laughs> fucking just, <whoosh. laughs> just cuts her fucking head off. Oh my god! Grandma gets fucking hari yeah. carried. Yeah, uh, and also the Warrens. <laughs> They have the worst fucking wallpaper. Yeah, that wallpaper yeah. looks like I know it was the seventies, but holy shit, that was but real. The kid packy. is dressed exactly like it. It reminds me of that scene in Garden State where Zach Braff is oh, standing against the, the shirt. Yeah, with yeah. The yeah. The yeah. <laughs> she sees the demon witch lady hanging mm -hmm. out with Annabelle. Yeah, and Annabelle's like, "I'm a ghost," and mm -hmm. then uh, the door locks. A lot of door yeah. locking and people banging on doors locking. Seems really, really repetitive, but again, it's Sean's favorite movie. <laughs> and so, this movie made a so lot So then Elizabeth Warren is just like, I'm getting a vision that my daughter is attacked. Uh, and they run to the house and luckily uh, Ed opens up the door in time. Well, again, Rhode Island and Connecticut are, must be super oh, wow. close together, right? That's what I was saying. They're like, like right next to each other. Yeah, it's like from here to the CVS across the street. Yeah. Like, that's how close it is. So he opens it just in time to save his daughter from the early 90s CGI chair. That was in 2010. Thank God <laughs> for editing, because there's no chance in hell he had enough time to open that door. Yeah, there was some like it. time well, expanding editing, yeah. like he, Temple of Doom with the thing lowering. He is Night Owl. <laughs> he is Night <laughs> Owl. So. Well, and, and he's Ocean Master. Yes. Uh, I thought that chair looks so bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was bad. So bad. I'm like, why? And we're watching it on the big TV. I mean, in the store here. And uh, it's all no. HD, and I'm just like, oh, Lord, no. Like You wouldn't <laughs> think this monitor's HD. No, it's amazing. No. What but it is. Do, yeah. <laughs> so then the cop goes to the ghost hunter. He helps the ghost hunters out. Mm -hmm. And that stops him from doing very important things like DUI checkpoints and writing tickets for when people park on the wrong side of the road or making sure people aren't enjoying marijuana in their own home. He could be stopping all these egregious crimes, but he goes to help out ghosts. Yeah. And I don't think you can leave your job to investigate ghosts. He, they realize the mom has been taken over. Yeah. And she's gone like mental. She's like trying to stab the girl with scissors. She's like, ah! Yeah. Is this like, is this like, the dude's face or neck or again, something Again, is like this that? all the demon wants to do? Just well, keep killing kids? Here's the thing. You were just joking about like Connecticut and Rhode Island being yeah. so far away. And it's like, Lorraine gets the fucking call like, oh, mom, mom took the two little kids home. Mm -hmm. And then like, there's no way there was enough time for them to get back. And she didn't fucking just murder these kids. Yeah. And then, even though it wasn't approved, Ed Warren decides he's going to do a Catholic exorcism, despite the fact he is not a priest. And I don't think that would technically work by their own rules. No. But he's going to try it. He's going to try it. They're very religious, Tony. They're very religious. They should be religious to the point where they're like, we're not allowed to do this. <laughs> but I want Sorry. them to be reading the Latin like Brad Pitt does Italian in uh, <laughs> fucking Inglorious Bastards. It's like, <laughs> Gorlami. And the devil's like... Really? We do it. You have it here at this exorcism. What does it feel like? Oh, it's the ending of uh, the Rennie Harlan Exorcist prequel, Re uh, Exorcist Four, technically, um, yeah. where like the, the whole beginning, the beginning, not Dominion, because they the made beginning. the same movie twice with two different directors. Yeah. Um, where it's like, okay, the movie is what it is, uh, and then all of a sudden it becomes Evil Dead Two. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, whoa, this was jarring, and now we get to the point in the movie where everything kind of felt like a seventies. Supernatural movie, and then all of a sudden it's like schlock, you know? Yeah, yeah. The, the mom has this typical possessed demon face. Yeah. Uh, the, the demon can mentally move guns and use shotguns like Magneto. How does the how does 
it know to use a shotgun? Like, it knows to pump it. Yeah, and you gotta think, all right, this woman died in the 1800s or whatever, but she's up on modern... Yeah, firearms. Yeah, like, exactly. Can you imagine like you walk into a room and there's just there's a, you don't see it. There's just in the air by itself is guns and ammo, and it's like turning itself. It's like walking into the room and Annabelle's coloring on the wall. You just close that room, lock it, and never go back yeah. in there. You know. <laughs> uh, yeah. So then like she's coughing up blood and stuff. Mm-hmm. She's being thrown around. It's cool when her face comes through the thing though, because it kind of yeah. reminded me of uh, Fulci zombie when bit. they're like coming through the right. the sheets. And then um, meanwhile. The little girl runs away at some point yeah. and she's hiding and the other guy is looking for her mm-hmm. and he finds her under the floorboards <laughs> and then he goes, don't worry, guys, I found her. She's in the kitchen. And then Lily Taylor's like, ho, ho, ho. And she runs in mm-hmm. to this series of tunnels that are throughout the house. Yeah. I don't know how yeah. big this house is. Underneath their house is like yeah. uh, the Friday the 13th remake where there's just series of tunnels yeah. that lead you to where oh, it's yeah. like Disney World. Yeah. Under- <laughs> you know? And then I fucking lost it at this. So like. The little girl's underneath the kitchen. Mm -hmm. The mom has her. And then Patrick Wilson is like sticking his head through a hole. And he's like, the devil is bad. The devil. And then, and then Ron Livingston's like, Oh yeah, the devil. So everyone's like poking their head through holes, and then like Lorraine is like got her hand underneath <laughs> trying to grab the girl, and they're like, "Get out of here, demon!" I kind of like the first half of the uh, the yeah. exorcism where she's like in the chair and it floats. It looks a little oh, you hokey. Don't, like poke, poking your head through walls. Uh, that part is fucking stupid because he's like people like The Shining, and sure. that has a guy poking his head through a wall. <laughs> the funniest shot though, and it's supposed to be serious, obviously, but is like when uh, Patrick Wilson's like Bathsheba, and then she's like. <laughs> It's like, all right, now you've kind of lost me, and I like this movie. I like when her chair is upside down, and then it drops her. Yes. And she... D- the, well, they say, let her go, and I'm like, Ugh, you so, put your hands out first. Yeah. Poor choice of words when the Joker... <laughs> I, I was thinking, yeah. But, like, uh, she, what if she landed on her head, and she became paralyzed, and now the devil has no use for her because she can't kill kids because she's in a wheelchair, unless she, like, puts, like blades at the end of her wheelchair or like guns like Mr. No Legs, you oh know? Oh my god. <laughs> so then apparently the memory of the beach. She would be hell on wheels at that point. Yeah. I would agree. I would agree. The uh the memory of the beach saves her. Yeah. And drives the demon out. I guess. Yeah. I guess. Uh was it the exorcism or the memory of the beach? I'm not really sure. A little bit of column A, a little bit of column yeah. B. Yeah. And then everyone's all happy. The bruises go away. I don't think that's how bruises go, no. but this is magic bruises. Yes, I don't get that. And then the movie basically ends with a text card that says, you need to join the church and you're <laughs> going to hell. And I'm like, oh. Well, the God. movie ends twice because you think it's ending right. and then they cut back to the Warren house and then yeah. Vera for me was like, just got a call from the priest about Amityville. Oh, wait, we're not allowed to say that. We are uh, someplace Island. in Long Island. Long Island. Remember, Ooh. remember. You can make a movie that takes place in Amityville that's about ghosts, as long as you're not doing that specific story. Right. And don't ask why me and Newt heavily researched that in fact. <laughs> <laughs> and the movie does before that text uh, screen. Yeah. They do a quick tease at the end where it's like, oh, the music box opens, but you don't see a ghost. So do they ever follow up a- on? No. Music- okay. So, so is the music box, n- the music box is now when they're like. Yeah. Cavalcade of horrors Here, or whatever they have. Here's the there. thing I don't get though. Like the ghost that was associated with the mu- the music box was the little boy. It wasn't yeah. Bathsheba. So what the fuck is the point of the music box? Well, Bathsheba went to hell. Yeah. So she finally got her wish. I, I guess. guess. Did, I want Indiana Jones. You betrayed Bathsheba. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we look at pictures of like the real life people. Yeah. And we see the Warrens and. Let's just say casting was being very generous mm. when they uh, were picking the uh, actors yeah. to fill out these parts. Uh, and I actually like how the end credits are done with like slides yeah. on the thing. I'm like, I wish the opening, I wish there were opening credits that look like also, that. Also, we got this far into the movie before I realized, oh yeah, Ron Livingston is not the dude from the new Godzilla movie. I always mix him <laughs> yeah. and uh, Kyle Chandler up. Yeah. yeah. But Ron Livingston is going to play the character that Billy Crudup played yes, in, in the Flash. Yeah. yeah, in the Flash movie. So. Um, yeah, and that's the end of the movie. I didn't like it. Uh, like, I, all right, so if I didn't see all the movies it was ripping off, mm-hmm. maybe I would like it if this was like my first experience, but I, it just kept reminding me of movies I'd rather be watching. Yeah. People were freaking the fuck out in the theater. Oh, this movie was a huge hit. Really? No, but no, like in the theater, we, uh, Justin and I's dad saw it like in, I don't know. We saw it in uh, Chandler, Arizona, and uh, it was like the middle of the night, and we saw it, and it was like nothing but kids in the theater, and like they were screaming like 
like you read about. It was yeah. insane, you know? Yeah. Like, so. you ever watch, like, the, um, the, the Exorcist where they were filming? In oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was like that experience. Or, like, Alien. I'm like, it's... Really? No. You know? No. It's more creepy than scary for me. Yeah. I just, because I was, like the it was genre. Definitely more subdued. Uh, going back and watching again, again, I didn't like it as much as I did when I saw it in the theater, but it has more restraint than a movie yeah. like this probably would you know have. What? You know, I kind of appreciate it Insidious a little bit more for just being wackier. Yeah. Like that one just went all in. And then this feels like a little bit more restrained. Yeah. And, I mean, I don't like either. But I, I don't know. I, no, like modern movies, like th this is more of a popcorn horror movie. Yeah. Then you have something like Hereditary, which is more of like an art house yeah. horror movie. And then you have like Terrifier, which is on Shudder, which is actually one of the scariest movies I've yeah. seen in a really, really long time. The best time. haunted house film I've seen recently was His House. That was great. That you was, and I were talking yeah, about that. that. Yeah, really. What was that one about? Oh, uh, it was about... um. Uh, immigrants, refugees, yeah. yeah, refugees from Africa go to the UK and they're put in like you know project housing. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's like a s spooky ghost that are following. I don't want to mm -hmm. give it away too much because yeah, it's yeah, actually yeah. really really good. There's some pretty decent scares mm -hmm. on that one. Check that out. Yeah, uh, no, I really really like that one. Mm -hmm. This one I did not like, and of course, as we all know, Sean's, <laughs> Sean's favorite, favorite movie. movie yeah. I, listen, I like it a lot. I yeah. totally get it. I mean, it's not for everybody. I mean, I like the Insidious series at least mm -hmm. the first yeah. three. But you, I also you actually you actually said. Said, uh, Stanley Kubrick's a hack yeah. and The Shining sucks. Mm -hmm. I'm conjuring all the way. That's what you yeah. said before we rolled the camera. And he was like hiding behind his chair half the movie and he's like, oh, I've seen it a bunch of times. We had to turn the lights on in there. Yeah, you it know? was really weird. It was, really was alright. It was fine. So wait, so part two was the Enfield yeah, right, Can you fill us yeah. in on the okay, shared okay. universe I'll just of ignore Conjuring? ignore everything you just said. <laughs> so, so if I wanted to watch Conjuring, what, what is the order that I watch the Conjuring oh, shared man. universe? Because well, yes, this became a shared universe. Do you have to watch it in like the Star Wars? You know there's people online or like you have to watch these and then this one and then these you know yeah don't do that shit <laughs> yeah just what's the release yeah because yeah, i didn't realize how many movies were connected yeah I, I mean i guess okay so annabelle is technically a prequel because it shows okay. you how the, mm -hmm. this demon gets inside annabelle so conjur how many conjurings are there they're coming out with the third one yeah. okay so the two conjurings and then annabelle yeah and Most. then they did i think annabelle creation which there's, i know there's three annabelles i bought yeah. them for my goddaughter i yeah. didn't watch it but i'm like you like stupid horror shit i i really feel like i saw the third annabelle but yeah. i must have been so high yeah. i don't remember okay, any okay. of it in the theater so two conjurings three annabelles and the nun, the nun, nun, and then La 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 Lorena, La La, 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 Yorona, La Yorona. Because I got made fun of incessantly for saying that wrong on Movie Dumpster. By the way, go check that out again. Yeah. Uh, by my <laughs> girlfriend, uh, by a fan. So it's La Yorena. La Yorena. Okay. Sorry, I hit the microphone mm -hmm. there. Uh, but yeah, so I would I would at least say Annabelle Creations worth watching. Okay. I listen. The nun's not great, but I kind of liked it. Joel Escola hated it because he said it was ripping <laughs> off uh, Demon Knight. Yeah. Because uh, they have like some Jesus blood plot line. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I like this movie. The first, again, the first Annabelle sucks. The second mm -hmm. one's good. Third one, I, I guess I might have saw it. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Okay. Conjuring 2 is good, but it's definitely... It's a lot hokier. I, I, there's probably a better word for it, but it's a lot more into like, oh, there's a demon and it's like actually there and it's not just a ghost or someone's possessed. And then the third one coming out is The Devil Made Me Do It, which yeah. is about that trial where the mm, guy... Yes. And there were... So the... I think the first movie had several lawsuits. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, These the series gets sued a lot. And I remember, I guess, the one that they're putting in production. I forget yeah. the specifics. There was one of the movies where like someone like accused them of like like they needed to be credited for the story. Mm -hmm. And I think the studio defended it by saying like, it's a true story. We don't have to credit you because it's just a thing that happened. And then they were like, all right, you have to prove ghosts and demons are real. <laughs> and it settled out of court as you would expect it to. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, they're the, like, here's a million dollars. Yeah, so <laughs> the third one, and then is there like other spin, like are we going to get a movie about the monkey wind up toy? I think we did. I think that might have been Dead Silence. I think that was wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because you know, it's definitely a reference to one of his earlier movies, mm -hmm. but I saw Dead Silence. You were saying the samurai it. actually comes to it's life. in the other movie, yeah. I kind of want to see that one. Yeah. I want to see what that samurai It does. was dumb schlock. It was kind of like the one where all the ghosts come out of the rooms and into the house. I was like, it's fun, you know. Hollywood, hire us to do the samurai suit yeah. one. It'll be in feudal Japan. Mm -hmm. And they'll be like, oh, there's the demon samurai. We have no idea how to stop him. And, and, then, then, and, then, okay. and then, and then, and uh, then, people come on a boat mm -hmm. and they're like, 
they're like, we heard about this evil samurai and like, we don't know how to stop him. We're praying to our gods. And they're like, let me tell you about our Lord and Savior, Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. Oh. And that's when the demon goes, ah! Could you, could you play like a young priest that like the, the Vatican sends out to spread the word? Yeah. And you're a young Italian priest and you get sent to this place in Japan. It's so strange to you, but then your faith has to fight. But there wouldn't just be one demon samurai. Okay. There's got to be a bunch of demon samurais. Right, yeah. right, right, yep. right. <laughs> I think this is a really what good if- idea. What if you go there on the boat, but because you can't speak Japanese and you're a foreigner, they just fucking kill you? <laughs> They're like, we have no idea what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I'm excited for the third one. I don't know. I try to keep my hype levels low after how bad Mortal Kombat was. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. We, if it's good, great. If it's not, whatever. Conjuring 2 had some cool stuff in it. I like it. Stuff it's, in it I like you this know? one better, but it's I, I, so I just, fucking funny, though, when you go, oh, yeah, that girl, she was possessed. Then you look at the picture, and it's just a girl jumping out of her fucking bed and you're like oh so it's so fucking bullshit oh she spoke in other voices oh okay well i've never heard another kid my brother's kid when he was really little used to try to do like monster voices Mm. on the phone i'm like yeah it's what they do kids are fucking stupid man it's so dumb and uh yeah i guess watch that i don't know anyway (laughs) this has been anything you want to plug yeah is there anything you want to plug i don't i don't know i think i've already said enough (laughs) Uh, i just don't i just want to know what kind of bearded, long-haired guy would just he constantly interrupt a show and talk about his own show? I could never no. imagine being a bearded, long-haired guy plugging his own stuff on someone else's thing. So I'm I'm above that, okay? I'm not. <laughs> Thank you, Sean, um, for coming on the channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, we should, at this point that this comes out, ha- should have just released our Mother's Day episode with Ooh. Josh from Lunch Meat, VHS. Um, Lunch Meat, who did the great packaging for that movie we didn't like. No, yeah. But we love great Lunch packaging, Meat. packaging, though. The packaging, top notch yeah. for Last Blockbuster. And a movie, no- not so much. And another one for you talking about tapes and rental reviews fans. We uh, had Kieran on last what's, month for Street Fighter. What's rental review? Don't worry about it. Uh, so yeah, yeah, Street Fighter, the the movie. Yes, yes, not not Legend of Chun. No. <laughs> <laughs> Put a bullet in my head if I have to yeah. review that one one so day. So listen to that podcast. I got yes. paid hazard pay to watch that movie because yeah. when they used to be oh. thirty five millimeter, they're like nobody wants to watch this. We'll give you extra money to screen that, and they did the same thing for Dragon Ball Evolution. <laughs> so I got extra <laughs> we money. We did an episode on that. Oh lord. Yeah. So check out Movie Dumpster. Please. Check out the podcast feed for this show. And actually, the Godzilla thing reminded me, both of you were guests on my uh, Godzilla podcast. Oh, so yeah. check that out. We yeah. did uh, Smog Monster and Gigan. And uh, yeah, so let's uh, let's get out of here because I think I hear more spooky ghosts. And and that I'll was s- just my phone a bunch of times because I don't I forget how to silence it on my new phone. <laughs> You're fired. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page.